Welcome to Senior Break. I am Marie May from Addison Township. And I'm Dawn Medici with Oxford Township Parks and Recreation. Today we would like to welcome Deborah Baltus. Thank you for um, coming and joining us today. Um, she's got a wealth of information and knowledge about um, learning and understanding um, and funding for senior um, care. Um, so Deborah, why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about yourself and your background and how did you get to where you're at today? Sure. Well, what I did, my background is I'm not originally from Michigan, but you know, this last year I did learn to love the Lions, even though I'm a <laughs> Packer fan, because oh. I am from Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. uh, I come from a, a area not real well off in Wisconsin and where families and people take care of the older people. And when I ultimately left there and I have a background in comprehensive public accounting, I have a law degree, I started my law practice and I still did a lot of work with seniors. Okay. And what I found is that it was so gratifying because they really appreciate what you can do. And you did you felt like you were taking care of family instead of just a client. Okay. And what I also noticed over the course of time is that a lot of seniors don't have the support. Right. So in, in working with that and then dealing with my own parents, and it was so funny because so many clients would call and say, how's your mom and dad? What's going on? And, and then when, as each one passed away, they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. Right. And I go, no, oh. it's all good. My, my parents gave me a lot of insight into dealing with seniors. Okay. Uh, my dad, at the age of 61, had a stroke that left him 100% incapacitated. Oh, wow. But because of being at the right place at the right mm -hmm. time, and truly it was, because at that time there was only 18 hospitals in the country that was dealing with the experimental drug that they now give when you have a stroke, they, if they catch you within the first three hours. He was about 12 hours into the stroke by the time they determined that he was eligible to receive the drug, because at that time they were looking at 24 hour period of time. Okay. So he went from 100% incapacity to about 85%, or incapacity to 85% of capacity oh. with my mom's assistance. Well, interesting, my mom had been working as a CNA at a local nursing home and hospital nursing home, yeah. and she retired three months before my dad had the stroke. Wow. So wow. she truly became the caregiver and sometimes the hospitals and rehabs weren't exactly thrilled when she let them know what she knew they should be doing, <laughs> exactly. but it worked out. Yeah. But, I, but wow. I was able to really watch how they did it, how they dealt with the doctors, the different communities, care communities they were dealing with. And then when my, after my dad had the stroke, my mom just looked at the situation and said, I will always be able to take care of Floyd. Right. Because, of course, she doesn't think anything's going to happen to her. But mm -hmm. it, she goes, I don't think that he'll ever be able to take care of me, so I better get some long-term care insurance. Now, she has a very simple background where she, had, was, she went to a one-room rural schoolhouse, eighth grade education. Wow. She knew yeah. she needed the insurance. She didn't always understand. And she actually went through three different policies, and then the last policy, she didn't understand the word inflation. Okay. So she got a policy that said she gets $100 a day benefit. There was a 30-day exclusionary period, which most policies, it's more like 90 days. And it had a lifetime benefit, which normally I would tell clients, oh, you know, get for five years. But hers was lifetime. lifetime. And I thought, wow, yeah. you paid for this, and it's lifetime, you'll never get your money's worth. Oh my gosh, did she ever. Because mm. back in 2013, I was visiting her, and, and three weeks later, I get the phone call, your mom needs care, 24-hour care now. She, wow. Her health had deteriorated, she had a debilitating arthritis condition, and so what she did is she, we, had, we couldn't get into any place right away. Luckily, she had visited a number of people who were already living in different care communities. So she had their, a, oh yes, an idea. Oh, yeah. she said, if I have to go somewhere, right. here's where I want to go. So while I was there three weeks earlier, we actually went and visited. Oh, wow. And so I could see where it was. 
Who knew that that was going to end up being where she needed to go? But there was a little waiting list, so we had to wait about a month to get her in. And shortly before that month was up, she ended up sick and in the hospital mm -hmm. and then to rehab. So what happened is, here's this two-bedroom apartment she was going to move into, and it's empty. You have to fill it. So went through. A, I put together a list mm -hmm. of, okay, she's going to need this and this and this and this. Right. And it got the entire apartment set up on October 1st of 2013. And she came, I picked her up from the rehab on October 2nd. She went right there and she goes, oh my gosh, this is so nice. Yeah. We, you know, we just took things from the house. It wasn't cluttered. It was everything mm -hmm. that I knew she would, would want. want. Or, and, and, and could and, need. And, and right. could need, right. exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, because of her, and at that time, I'm starting to look at this long-term care insurance and trying to figure things out. And, you know, I called the agent who was, I hate to admit, not helpful. So I called mm -hmm. the claims department and said, help me through this so I understand how to proceed. And they, they told me what to do. I followed their instructions. And my mom, because of her, not, her feeling that I, need, I will need somebody to or some help with taking care of me in the future. Right. Because at that time, you know, kids are scattered around the country. Mm -hmm. So she bought that policy. She, even with just the simple... Uh, social security and a little pension from a paper mill, she never had to touch her assets. And not that they had a lot, but right. never yeah. had yeah. to touch any of her monies so that, you know, I looked at it and said, we survived that long without ever having yeah. to worry about, That's amazing. Um, you know, going into something further. And she, mm -hmm. she actually was there for eight, a little over eight years. Wow. Wow. So. And probably oh. had re a really good life there, too. Oh, my gosh. I will know? tell you that she became the social butterfly. Yeah. And they, you know, she worked with it. And in setting up her apartment, when she went in, she needed help getting uh, in and out of bed, uh, on and off a toilet, needed help with care, you know, getting sure. dressed and bathing mm -hmm. and all of that. Well, she always would need help with getting dressed and bathing because her fingers were you know, from the arthritis, she right. wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to do that. But the rest of it, I, yeah. you know, I, I looked at the situation and said, what can we put in here to keep her as independent as yeah. possible? And I went to the medical supply place and I said, you've got to find something in your catalog. This is what I'm thinking. And of all things, there's a pole that they put next to like a tub or a shower with a couple grips on. I had that put next to her bed, and we put some clickers on for lights and, and TV. Sure. And oh. she used it for grips, and from then on, she was in and out and more independent. Yeah, Very that's nice. great. Very yeah. nice. That's really good. It's wow. really amazing to see um, when uh, a loved one goes into a, a senior living mm -hmm. um, for for their home now, yes. and uh, whether it's care or independent or what have you, the transformation um, and how things uh, evolve and, and how that change for the better. Oh, absolutely. Because you worry that it's not going to work out, yeah. but there are so many things like the socialization piece that makes a big difference. And not only the socialization, my mother went from, you know, I'll, I'll put on makeup, I'll put on something nice if I'm leaving the house, to every morning, morning. she's got a little necklace on. A sense she's of got purpose. She's got some lipstick yeah. on. Something oh, to yeah. look forward to. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And the fact that she picked it out. Yeah. That, I think that made a big difference, yeah. too. That's what she, right. you gave her what she wanted. Exactly, sure. yes. exactly. Because yeah. she said, and it was interesting, and that's one thing I tell clients, you know, you need to start these conversations early, early. with the parents right. because you need to know what's available. And, you know, there's so right. many. Think about mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Back 20 years ago, you didn't see all these senior communities you know, mm -hmm. in existence, no. but that's where why there's so much need, and yeah. that's that's mm -hmm. really, uh, you know, by starting the conversations, and not the parents don't always want to hear it, but yeah. then go out and see what's there. Yeah. Right. Well, we want to hear a lot more about this. Yeah. Okay. But we have to take a little break right now. Yeah. Okay. So we'll come back and, yeah. and hear more. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Be Thank right you. back. Excited to hear. Thank you. Military families often sacrifice precious time away from loved ones while serving our country. And for those with children, the separation can be especially difficult. We were worried that with him leaving, that she would lose those connections with her dad. Some of life's best moments happen between parents, children, and the pages of a good book. 
United Through Reading provides that connection. You can watch your mom or dad read a book to you, and it almost feels like they're really there. We ensure they remain a consistent, meaningful part of their children's lives, no matter the distance. Just seeing Jacob recognize Daddy again after a long time just melted my heart. And now, as we're facing greater isolation from our loved ones, United Through Reading is also available to veterans. Learn more about United Through Reading and download our free secure app at unitedthroughreading.org. Have you mixed your pain meds, your sleep meds, your allergy meds? Call the Poison Helpline. Has your child swallowed household cleaner, a chip of paint, a wild mushroom? Call the Poison Helpline. Have you been bitten by a spider, a snake, an insect? Call the Poison Helpline. Poisonings can happen at the home, on the job, or in the great outdoors. Call the Poison Helpline first to speak with medical professionals who can give you free personal advice anytime. 1-800-222-1222. Save the number, save a life. And is this with the doctor or is this with the nurse practitioner? Fantastic. Dad, lunch. Got some soup for you. You are loved. Oh, you. <laughs> oh, look at those freckles. This was very much. You fun. are valued. Yeah. <laughs> you are strong. You are resilient. You got this. You are there for them. We are here for you. Find free care guides to support you and your loved one at aarp.org slash caregiving. Welcome back to Senior Break. Um, before break, we were talking with Deborah about um, uh, Senior her, care. Her senior care, but her mom picking the facility that she uh, went to for her care. And uh, I believe you started to say something or you said, you know, about um, her picking that out and it was her decision. And one thing that I have, I learned, my father had passed away a few years ago and my mom was independent at home and things started not looking all that great for because my dad wasn't there anymore. And it was really hard to be a good listener. But in the end, it truly helped me, helped her to be that good listener because and it, was, it was on her time, not my time, her time. And um, it really makes a difference when you sit back and you really be a good listener. Well, and I think what helps is when the parents are aware of maybe they might have a problem like I said my mom did have arthritis and uh, so she was well aware that things were going to get worse a lot of parents don't necessarily want to look at that um, I think and and also they don't want to discuss it because that's going to lead to a death conversation nobody wants to talk about that no but what You're I right. but I, what I really find is that the conversations are good to have to just kind of put it in. And I think kids have to pay attention too. Mm -hmm. uh, again, a lot of people are scattered around the country. They may not see things. You, we always see a, uh, an uptick in people entering senior communities after holidays because kids come home and they go, oh, they can't be here anymore. And so, you know, people have to pay attention. Are the parents falling? Are they, you know, are they, you know, having all these UTIs, which usually mean they're not drinking enough? Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? What is their situation? Is there is the house messier than normal? Are you know what? Are they more isolated? And it isn't necessarily that there's bad things going on. I have clients right now. They're in their 90s. They're selling their condo and moving into senior care because all their friends have so, passed away right. and they need some socialization. Yes. So it's all the different levels. Right. And I think when you That's sit back and can figure out which you know, what you need from the senior care, then it's much easier for the, the family to be able to look at it and say, okay, here's the places we're gonna look at. Because, and there's a lot of senior placement agencies mm -hmm. out there. Um, they all 
work a little bit differently, you know, and uh, I'll be honest, some I like and some I don't, but uh, they really, you know, they, the good ones will listen to what the family says they're looking for because sometimes you don't need all the bells and whistles. What right. you really need is the care. Sure. And sometimes what, what people are finding is it may not be what we call the big box communities. It may, whether it's a, a, a big assisted living, a, a, a continuing care, it may be a residential assisted living home, which most people don't even know exists right. in, in the actual communities yep. where up to six people could live in a house. And then there's actually other areas where it could be seven to 12 people and then others up to 20 people. So there's there's a lot going on where, you know, there it's more more one-on-one -on -one care, right. not one-on-one, -on -one, but maybe a three-to-one. Sure. But there's so many different things, but I think the family has to look at it. But people have to pay attention. They have yes. to watch what are the parents or whoever is the loved one at home mm -hmm. where you have concerns, what are they doing? And they need to get out and see what's out there in the community. Yeah. You, I, don't, you don't wait till a crisis. Yeah. Right. I had a neighbor that was just overwhelmed yeah. when, when it happened to her mother and she had to make decisions and she had all these papers and pamphlets mm -hmm. in front of her and she was just trying to make heads yeah, or tails yeah, and, and didn't know yeah. and I, I tried to help her at the time this was years ago but I didn't know because now there's a lot more information out right, right. that people can get but yeah. before yeah. there wasn't and it, like yeah. you say talking to them ahead of time that would eliminate a lot of what you're looking for because right. you know what they want and don't want. Exactly. And the other thing that a lot of people don't realize, especially the younger people because they think the estate plan is just for older people. Right. <laughs> If you're going to take care of mom or dad or someone else, they better have a patient advocate, former medical power of attorney. They better have a durable power of attorney for financial, and they better have a HIPAA form in place. Mm -hmm. And and so, in fact, a couple I had I helped with last summer, I met them. They needed to go into a care community. I made the I got their name and made a phone call, and she goes, "Oh my gosh, you're the answer to the prayer," because they needed to move out of their their condo, and the husband I could tell was starting to suffer a little dementia. The wife's like, how did you know? I go, well, I've had a lot of experience mm -hmm. dealing with seniors. Right. Yeah. And so they, the first thing I said is, what do you have for documents? They had nothing. And this is a second marriage, and I'm well aware a lot of times it is. And you know, each side of the family have their own ideas. Mm -hmm. So we yep. immediately did powers, the powers of attorney. And that was the saving grace for this person, this couple, because the, the assets were mostly like retirement accounts and all were in the husband's name. And this way the wife was able to access to be able to help pay for some of the care and all. Plus she needed to have that so that she could on his behalf be applying for veterans benefits for sure. him. Right. Because a lot of people don't realize if somebody's a veteran, there's a lot, a lot of, of veteran, stuff out there. Veteran right? benefits, not just for the, the veteran himself or herself, but also for the spouse. The spouse, yes. right. Yeah. Yeah. So I know this, um, this book, Paying for Long-Term Care, has all kinds of great information. As you can tell, I've got all these different pages flagged with little notes on it. Um, I wish, like I said to you earlier, I wish I had this book um, before my dad passed. Yeah. And that, uh, you know, my parents did a really pretty good job in, in having all of their paperwork done, but really no conversation about what would be next as far as care and where to go and what to do and I was lost too and we were mm -hmm. we were overwhelmed yeah. um, but um, so a lot of great information in this book talks about all the different you talk about all the different types of care and right. and facilities um, it, like you mentioned about the residential had no idea no, people have no clue no clue you could have a residential assisted living house right next door to you and because, not even know and it. not even know it right because they, it's just a regular house sure mm -hmm. you know it's just when they get a little bit bigger like seven beds or more or eight you know or the 13 yeah. to 20 there's certain other requirements for sure. the house but you would never know that it's even there yeah. and i know there's a couple miles from where i live there's a subdivision of a number of uh ranch homes and a number of them are as mm -hmm. residential yeah. assisted living homes wow well, Great. I, I've got some more questions when we get back sure. um, that I'd like to ask, okay. Okay. and it's a little mixture of what we have, but um, right now we're going to take a little break. Okay, right, okay. Yes, okay. we'll be right back.
Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Welcome back to Senior Break. Um, Deborah's been answering so many questions, but it's also brought up a lot of questions that we would still like answered. Deborah, one is if you have one of the if you have filled out one of the wills on your computer, how is how good is that? And would that stand up? Would you know? Because people think once they do that, it's set in gold. Well, I think the real problem is that most people don't understand that the will does absolutely nothing to keep. Your, the, your affairs when you die out of probate court. Absolutely nothing. All the will actually does, and if it's executed correctly, which means it, re, it has to be uh, witnessed by two people, mm -hmm. so as long as it's, it's done correctly, then it just says, here's who I want my assets to go to, and here's who, and who I wanted to have in charge. So many people will fill out one on the computer or go to an attorney, and what do they usually do is they'll say, if they're married, they'll say, well, give it to my spouse and then to my kids. Or if they're single, they'll say, just give it to my kids. And a lot of them will say, well, I'll just have you know, my kids be in charge, you know, if they're by themselves. And I'm, I kind of smile going, well, you know, you don't need a will because that's the law. If you die, unless you know it's a substantial dollar amount, if it's a blended family, those are all special circumstances. So you're okay. saying that's already the law before they have that well, paper? Typically. Okay. You know, again, if it's a, a first marriage or they've okay. never married, the law says where everything goes. It's okay. if they want, for example, if they want to name Deborah Baltus in their document, well, that's not the law, so they would need to be able to do a will to say it. But it doesn't keep it out of probate. There truly is only th Four, three ways to stay out of probate when you die. Okay. You either have joint ownership on your accounts with rights of survivorship. Those are important words. Uh, you have beneficiary designations on your accounts, uh, both primary and, and contingent, or you use a living trust. Those are the only ways to keep everything out of probate. But when you go through that process, even the joint ownership, there's different types of joint ownership, and only one kind will keep it out of probate. Uh, you, you, what I tell clients is the best thing they could do, and even as a preliminary before something happens, the kids or somebody should sit down, and I know a lot of parents like to hold everything close to the vest, you know, they don't want people to know mm -hmm. what they own. Mm -hmm. But even my own parents, I just said, look, you want me to be in charge? I, I need, need to. And know I'm 600 them. miles away right. anyway. Mm -hmm. I need to know what the heck you all have. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we made a list, and that was the blessing in disguise because I knew exactly both when my dad died, plus going further, grow, continuing on with my mom. I knew exactly what they had, who to contact, and all of that information. Sure. Yes. I didn't need dollars and cents. No. But you need to know. And there's so much, so many assets that people forget about. For example. Yeah. <laughs> Something simple like a lot of people might have a uh, little met metropolitan life policy, old, old one. Mm -hmm. And most of them don't even realize they, right. they actually yeah. own stock also. Yeah. Right. So there's things Sometimes, like that. Sometimes, um, I know what we did one time was we put a list together, mm -hmm. my sister and I, of all that bank information and gave it to the other one. Mm -hmm. Now, the one she gave me, I've never even opened it yet because yep. I don't need it yet. Right, right. But it's going to be a big help because exactly. I, I don't know her exactly. business. And I... And so for the ones that don't want anybody to know, they could do that and get exactly. sealed in. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. The and other, let that work. The mm -hmm. other thing is, in going through this process, the, I, I always advise people that the, the four major estate planning documents 
also while you are alive are a financial power of attorney. Mm -hmm. You can have it effective immediately upon signing or only upon incapacity, or it can be effective immediately as to the first person you trust to help you, but only upon your incapacity after that. A patient advocate form or health care power of attorney, mm -hmm. because you want to know, and people need to know, who's in charge of making those medical decisions when you cannot. The HIPAA form. A HIPAA form is just a single little page that says doctors, hospitals, clinics. Here's the people who can talk, talk with you. Right. They're not making decisions, but the decision makers are mm -hmm. part of the list. But at least they can talk with you at any time. Right. Mm -hmm. You know how many times, and I'm sure you've done that too, where you've had to call a medical provider, mm -hmm. a doctor or, or, or the pharmacy, and you've got to be able to ask questions and get answers. Mm -hmm. And then finally yeah. is a deed for the house. Uh, there is a, a, a number of people have heard of these ladybird deeds, and that's exactly what it is. It's a life estate deed that says to the owner, like, Mom, Mom, you own the house for your lifetime, and upon your death, if you haven't done anything else with it, here's who it goes to, and that'll keep the house out of probate. And why I, I always want people to have those is because if health deteriorates and the kids have to step in, they can work with being able to deal with the assets and the beneficiaries, the joint ownership. They can help get everything set up so that they, the assets will not go through probate. Okay, wow. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's we'll really key is yeah. knowing what mm -hmm. you need to do to stay right. out of probate, right? right. Because but doing a little bit of work ahead of time mm -hmm. saves a lot of work Dumbled. later. Well, even the power, well, and powers of attorney, both financial and medical, they're only valid while you're alive. And if, if you don't have those in place and you become incapacitated, the kids are going to have to go, or whoever's in left has to go to probate court to get guardianship and conservatorships. Now you're in the court system. So is there, if you go to an attorney and you ask to have a trust made, are every, the things that you've talked about, will most of those be asked of you, you know, the, just so that you, you give the right answers for your own trust. Well, the, the trust is separate. The trust is a document merely to put assets in and ultimately to disperse them upon okay. your death. But they're in a way so that whoever you leave in charge, if you're incapacitated, can use those assets for your care okay. or whatever your needs are. And then it provides for how the monies or how the assets mm -hmm. will be distributed out to okay. the beneficiaries. Uh, a number of times we don't have to use a trust. And I tell people, here's the way to know whether the trust is needed. Do you need to kind of pr protect the beneficiaries from themselves? Do you need to control at what point in time they get the get a, a distribution? Do you need to know how much of that distribution they're going to take or what, what they can use the monies for? If mm -hmm. those are issues that you have to be concerned about, okay. then you start looking at a trust for the ultimate distribution to okay. them. But if you're just looking at, you know, I want somebody to help take care of things for me while mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. alive, right. yeah. then you can just deal with the powers of attorney. Okay. All right, so um, we're getting close to uh, the end of our time. So I just want to so mention, there, we, we're going to have to have you back because there's just so much more much. that we didn't even get to touch on today. Right. But if you're interested in coming out and listening to Deborah, she'll be at the Oxford Senior Center on uh, Tuesday, May the 14th at 2 o'clock. And she's going to talk about a family checklist and how about moving into uh, senior living communities. So please come on out to the Parks and Recreation on Tuesday, May the 14th at two o'clock. Um, we are trying to get people to pre-register so we can have account, account so she can prepare accordingly. Um, uh, so please contact the Parks and Recreation um, to get signed up for that. Well, thank you so oh, much for coming you. out so today. Much. This was fun. Yeah. This was Our time great went so to fast. Yes, it, did, it did, it did, and there's so much more to talk yes. about. So we'll yes. have to have you back. Thanks, so. yes. Thank you. Yeah. But yeah. thank you for coming today and for oh, all of this so information. My pleasure. My pleasure. Really, My pleasure. Good. really so good. Great. Thank you. Yes. All right, so we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.